Sooty oyster catches are found right around the Australian coastline, except along stretches of continuous sea cliff like the Bunda Cliffs of the Great Australian Bight. They favour tidal rock shelves and reefs with rock pools, with a secondary preference for sandy beaches and muddy estuaries. The only species they can really be confused with is the closely related pied oyster catcher, but these prefer the beaches and estuaries and are seldom seen on rocky shorelines. It's reckoned that the total population of this Australian species is fewer than 12,000 individuals. That hardly seems credible until you consider that Australia has about 37,000 kilometres of coastline, which means an average of around 3 kilometres of coast in a strip a few metres wide to support each bird. And of course, most of that 3 kilometres would be unsuitable or marginal sooty habitat. That very low population density might explain an extraordinary fact. The sooty oyster catcher wasn't scientifically described and named until 1845, 57 years after European settlement at Sydney Cove, even though the sooty is present along Sydney's rocky coastline. By contrast, the even less numerous pied oyster catcher was drawn by First Fleet artists and scientifically described and named in 1817, 28 years before modern science even noticed the sooty, which perhaps suggests that early European settlers didn't much frequent the inhospitable rocky shorelines preferred by sooties. The species was finally described by the great English ornithologist John Gould. His wife Elizabeth did this illustration before her death in 1841. Evolution separated sooty and pied oyster catchers by a long process of preference for different habitats within the tidal zone. But it's also refined matters further, ameliorating competition between male and female sooties by having them mostly feed on different things. Here's how it works. Look carefully and you'll see that the female bird at the rear has a slightly longer and thinner bill than her male partners, which is more robust and has a stubby tip. Their bills are adapted to feeding on different prey. A field study published in 2012 showed that prey items differed markedly between sexes with only a 36% overlap. Sooties usually forage for two hours on either side of low tide. Females concentrate on soft-bodied prey which they can swallow whole, things like small fish crabs, blue bottle jellyfish and marine worms. Males prefer hard shelled prey, mussels, sea urchins, turban shells, black nerites and limpets. They often break the shell open by forcing it down into a wedge shaped crevice. Sooties breed in spring and summer. The female lays a clutch of two or three eggs in a crevice in rocks or a small hollow on the ground, often on an island and typically at an elevated spot where the parent birds can keep watch for intruders. Both parents incubate the eggs and care for the young. It's very unusual to see more than a single pair of sooties, perhaps with their juvenile offspring, but occasionally, when high tide coincides with wild seas, sooties from a long stretch of coastline will concentrate at a favourable headland rock shelf, like this one at Sharkey's Beach, Coldale, north of Wollongong. 
Here, on the 19th of March 2017, I counted 28 sooties on the beach's northern headland. Since careful observation has shown that there are only around 6 to 800 sooties along the whole 1200 kilometres of the New South Wales coast, the birds I counted that day represented perhaps 4% of the whole New South Wales population which is a sobering reflection on just how small the total population of the species is. Sharkies is a popular local dog beach, so to minimise disturbance to this important sooty habitat, Wollongong Council has clearly demarcated the vital rock shelf and beach zones and provided clear, informative signage about the species and the reasons for the restrictions. Sooty oyster catches are considered common around the Tasmanian coastline and Bass Strait Islands. However, the species is declared rare in South Australia and Queensland, near threatened in Victoria and endangered in New South Wales. <laughs>